Hey, here we are again at Crown by the Sea. We got a little fire going. Kabuncha. And we're reading from Like a Mighty Wind. This is very interesting. This is, um, The Witch Doctor Heals the Christians. When I became a Christian, says Meltari, Indonesia was still a heathen country. Even we who went to church got mixed up with heathen witchcraft and fetishes. I remember about six years ago, before the revival, if we got sick, we who called ourselves Christians would go to the witch doctors and they would do whatever they do and we would receive healing. Hmm. That was a terrible condition. We confessed to be Christian, but instead of experiencing the power of God in our lives, we were spiritually dead, and our church was like a funeral home. And then, off to the witch doctor. Our lives were even worse than those of the pagans. Sometimes when we got sick, we would go to the doctor. If he wouldn't help, sometimes we would begin to pray, we would go to the pastor, and he would say, Brother Mel, if the Lord wants to heal you, he will heal you. I would say, but don't you know whether the Lord wants to heal me or not? The pastor would say, well, it's hard to say, but just pray, and if he wants to heal you, he will. But pastor, in James chapter 5, I read, if someone gets sick, anoint him with oil, and the Holy Spirit will heal him. I would say to the pastor. Yes, that's true, brother, he would say. But that was written 2,000 years ago. It's a nice story, but just don't take it so literally. If the Lord doesn't want to heal you, just pray that he will give you grace to endure your pain. So I would accept it like that and would pray, Lord, if you want to heal me, heal me. Otherwise, help me to endure it. I would go back home and try to endure it, but I would always complain. Sometimes it was difficult to understand why God would lead this way. And we're reading here from Like a Mighty Wind by Mel Tari. So, you know what we would do? We would just go to the witch doctors. They would pray for us, and in about three minutes, we would be well. So we began to wonder, what about God? The witch doctor would just about always help us, and God never seemed to do anything. Which was the best to believe? Jesus, who sometimes left us in a desperate situation, or the witch doctor and his gods? There is such a mighty power in the demons who operate in my country that Christians wonder and doubt. These demonic powers also get people to believe in astrology, Ouija boards, and all kinds of other stuff like that. Maybe, may, many people there really look to this for help and guidance. The Dutch missionaries for 60 years labored for the Lord in Timor. In that time about 80,000 people joined the church, but our lives were not changed. We never experienced the power of God. We confessed ourselves as Christians, but we lived just like the pagans. Our pastors in Indonesia really had problems because most of the people were still bound by demonic powers. Very few really came into a real relationship interacting with Jesus in the spirit realm. It was terrible. People came to church, sang songs, read their prayers, and then went back to live their lives as they had before. The pastors had a small salary and had to do all kinds of things in the church. They seemed to do the best they could to invite people to church and talk to others about the Lord. We laymen never did, though. We would say the pastor and the other church officials will take care of all that. We don't want to do that. We are paying them to do our work. The Lord has changed this whole situation in my country in recent years in marvelous ways. Maybe you have heard of this, how the Lord has worked in my country. 
I would like to share with you Revelation 1, verses 4, 8, and 11. If you read your Bible carefully, you will note that this is a revelation from the Lord Jesus directly through a powerful vision to the Apostle John, who was a fisherman, while he was on the island of Patmos in prison. This is the testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is too bad that all the apostles weren't there. While John was alone on that island, the Lord Jesus came and revealed these things to him. That lonely island almost turned into a heaven for John. When the Lord came, he introduced himself to the Apostle John, and it was very easy for me to realize how the Lord did this. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty, he said. This is wonderful in English. The Lord said, I'm the Lord who is here now. I was here 2,000 years ago, and I'm the same one who will come again. If the Lord was to introduce himself in a proper way, he would have said, Who was, who is, and who shall come again. But he didn't say it that way. He began with, Who is, then, who was, and who is to come. Why? I too started to wonder why, and the Lord opened my eyes to the truth. The Lord wanted the Apostle John to know that he is not only the Lord that lived years ago, a thousand years ago, or even a day ago, but he is God with us today. He is not only a God who has done something yesterday and a God who will do something in days to come. What the Lord Jesus wanted to stress to John was, I am here today. today. I am the now God. How I praise the Lord for that. Many Christians who have the Lord Jesus actually have a Jesus that is the 2,000 years ago Jesus, a yesterday Jesus. We had the Jesus who healed people years ago, who cast out demons years ago, who performed miracles years ago, and who helped people years ago. It is difficult. To believe in a God like that. But Jesus said, I live today, not 2,000 years ago. If I need a God, I need a God who lives today, not many years ago. I need him today. Like a mighty wind, get one.